Welcome to Pathways to Aviation. Um, we have an amazing guest speaker with us. Uh, it's Ryan Ditto, who is an airport planner with the Sacramento County um, Department of Airports. And met him, I don't know, Ryan, you, could, you can interrupt me, three or four weeks ago where I was invited to this young professionals. Um, you guys had like a, a coffee hour or happy hour or something. It was all virtual. Um, and we exchanged who we are. You guys asked a bunch of questions amongst everybody. And then we played trivia, which I think I placed in last place. Thank you for that. Um, nice, embarrassing moment for myself. But want to welcome you to the show. Um, we have a number of individuals live on the show right now. And then a lot of our candidates watch the recorded version. So you're going to be sharing this with, with all of our candidates. And we have candidates that, uh, who live in 40 different states and we have a few abroad. So I'm going to turn it over to you where you could share your why um, and describe yourself. And if you want to open up for questions, then go for it. We'd love to have you do that. All right. Wow, Welcome. I didn't realize the audience was so big. This is exciting. Thanks for having me. Um, so let's see, Pete. Well, actually, first of all, the audience is the, the guy, the, everyone who's on the call now. Is this like a recurring group or is it a different group every week based on the topic or how do you guys do that it's it's been this summer it's been pretty recurring and we have right now they're all either um current college students recent college graduates or we have two uh mentors on the program today. all right all right cool well again yeah thanks for having me um this is really cool i just learned about pathways to aviation yeah, I guess it was three or four weeks ago, right, when we first met Pete. So um, glad to be here. So yeah, my name is Ryan Ditto. I'm an airport planner, um, as Pete said, in Sacramento. Uh, we have, so the Department of Airports oversees the county airport system. So we have four airports on our system, um, international. We've got a cargo airport and a, a GA-focused airport. And then a fourth airport, which actually I've been here for four years and I've never been to that airport. It's just, there's no tower or, you know, it's just kind of used for training purposes. So, um, but yeah, and I'll get into, you know, some projects and things and kind of how I spent time, but maybe first I should start with my background and kind of where I came from and how I got to this point. Okay. So originally I'm from Columbus, Ohio, or just outside of Columbus, Ohio. And so I spent, um, it took me, I guess it was six years to do my bachelor's degree in city planning and then my master's degree and also in city planning um, at Ohio State University and I you know I didn't actually I, I was kind of late in my life before I flew for the first time but I was always interested in uh, planes and you know my family always traveled just kind of around the Midwest in the car and so um, you know I, I liked getting out and seeing new places but um, aviation was something I wasn't that familiar with and so it kind of took until I got to college to understand, you know, that there were careers in aviation um, and that you could turn it into you know, kind of a, this lifelong thing. And you didn't have to fly. You know, I think a lot of times people think that you, you, if you go into aviation, it's you're a pilot or you, um, you know, maybe I, I guess, yeah, you work at an airport in some capacity, but a lot of times you don't know what that means or how to get there. And so I remember I was working on, um, a project which in, in um, the city planning program at Ohio State, which we called, um, what were they called? Studio classes. And so these were real world projects for actual clients. And so, you know, we were kind of senior in our um, college careers, I guess, or, or you know, the, the higher grades where um, we were kind of trying to do some more practice work and, and actually get out into, um, the world and do planning work and and have you know public meetings and do all the stuff that you do for city planning and, and developing neighborhoods and you know streetscapes and things um and actually i don't know if anybody knows this but columbus is the i think 15th maybe the 12th now it's been a few years largest city in the united states without light rail transit and so one of these studio classes that we did um was centered on developing transit or a light rail system for the city of Columbus, um, which we were connecting you know, to all of the neighborhood or a lot of the like high traffic and high volume neighborhoods in Columbus, um, as well as the airport. And for some reason, I volunteered to contact the airport 
for that project um just to ask you know like do you have plans for uh rail to the to the airport i mean like what does this mean for your operations and, and this and that so that's how i developed a relationship with um it's the columbus regional airport authority and so then let's see it was probably well that was undergrad so then I graduated, I think that following semester, maybe less less than a year later, uh, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't have a job lined up. I didn't really want to do city planning. Um, and I felt like, I was like, man, I just got to the end of like my college, my time in college, but I just kind of found something that I actually think is even more interesting now. And so I felt kind of disappointed that, you know, it took me so long to get there, but um, an opportunity came up to be, uh, well, to go to grad school at Ohio State, but then also like to go right into the graduate program, but then also work for the university and do um, uh, or work for the Center for Aviation Studies and then do research for them and, you know, and essentially become familiar with aviation um, through that avenue. So I was like, what perfect timing, you know, I, I was able to get it, I was accepted and then I, you know, started classes in the fall, um, still for city planning, just because there wasn't, um, there's not an airport planning track at Ohio State. Um, it's, you, you do city planning or you do some type of engineering. Um, and then that sets you up, you know, to, to kind of break into the aviation uh, realm, I guess. So I just did the best that I could, you know, with talking with mentors and, you know, other and professors and things to, supplement the education that I was getting with aviation oriented research projects. Um, and one of the projects I did over the a summer was, uh, actually, I think we were employed or the, the FAA was paying the university. Um, and, and then there was just a small group of us who were sifting through all of these um, NTSB reports. And so the you know, accident reports and, and incident reports um, from all of these databases. Um, that pilots use and the aviation com community uses. Um, and so our job was to kind of look through the narratives, understand what happened relative that, to that specific incident, um, and then categorize all that information in this database that the FAA had created. Um, and so the long-term uh, intent or goal of, of that exercise was to have categorized these incidents based on, you know, was it an issue relative to airfield geometry was there a communication breakdown from the uh, between the the control tower and the pilot? Um, was there weather? Was there some type of mechanical issue? You know, so then that that informed um, the FAA on how to better communicate with the aviation community and you know kind of where some of those shortfalls were. Um, and so that was a really interesting project, just that I you know, had never spent any time, you know, at least looking at an airport from that perspective. And so I, I learned a lot that summer, but, you know, grad school came um, and I brought up the Columbus Regional Airport Authority before. Uh, and so I needed an internship to meet the requirements for um, the graduate degree program. You couldn't graduate unless you had like 250 hours or something of internship time. And I was, I think I was going into might have been the summer um, between the, the two. It was a two-year program, so I think I was about halfway through. And um, the airport authority called, and they said, "We remember you from that class, um, and we need somebody, you know, and, and we think that you'll be a good fit." So I, I interviewed with them, um, and then ended up was hired. It was a paid internship, and I was there for a year, um, and that was really how I got my foot in the door. But I guess if I hadn't, you know, expressed interest those couple of years before that in um, you know, reaching out or you know, working on that relationship with the airport, I don't, maybe they wouldn't have called. Um, and so I, I think about that sometimes where it's just, you know, Pete, you said something about the way life kind of twists and turns and you know, things happen without you seemingly having to do something sometimes, or you know, it just kind of just takes place. And, but it's usually because of the work you've done in the background that those opportunities present themselves later. So um, that was an example of that. But so I was working there for about a year, um, but I knew I wanted to go from Ohio to California. And so um, that's when, let's see who was it? I've had, and this is another thing too, just there's so many people around you who can help you, you know, in your 
whether it's your you know, family or your friends or your, or your um, professors or classmates or whomever, aviation is such a little community and people that you, know, you see at a conference may end up working for you or vice versa one day. And so um, I guess in another twist of fate, you know, my, the person for whom I was a teaching assistant uh, in grad school went to a conference where my, well now former boss, uh, he's since left, um, our airport, but they went together and they were talking and, and, um, and, you know, my boss was looking for someone to fill a position and my uh, instructor I was working for as a teaching assistant said, I know somebody who could fill your position. And so, you know, it's a lot of times that just happens word of mouth. Um, but uh, I guess, you know, from there, I just kind of applied and, and was, and was maintaining that relationship for about a semester um, until so it was summertime. Um, I think, yeah, it was right after graduation. Actually, yeah, it was because I graduated May 7th. I had a job offer June 7th. And then I started the job August 7th. And so it was this very quick succession. I have to go back in my email and see if something happened on July 7th. I don't know. But um, it was just very quick. And, it, you know, I attribute that to the, the time I had spent networking um, in school and, and they really pushed that they being the, you know, the administration and the university just trying to get us to understand how valuable that is. And a lot of times, you know, it sounds kind of like fluff and yeah, network is a maybe a cliche term at some in some context, but it pays off, you know, to to talk to people and to be friendly and to, um, you know, work with um, you know, groups like this and, and the young professionals group. Um, that I'm a part of now, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But you never know where those things will take you. You know, and those those seemingly um, random encounters will take you. So, yeah, I've been at Cal in California now for f about four years. Um, I started as the assistant airport planner, and now I'm an airport planner. Um, and so, a lot of my day to day is focused on um, what we call land side projects. Um, so that's you know, like our roadways and our rental car facility. Um, you know, we're looking at uh, reserving space for uh, commercial uh, construction and commercial, um, what do I want to say, commercial development, commercial like hotels and restaurants and things on the airport. And so, uh, but then, you know, my team also does airside projects, which is maybe obvious uh, on the other side of the fence where the aircraft operate um, in terms of gate expansion that we're having to look at. And, Maybe we need to lengthen a runway at some point. And so things like that, you know, are kind of, they come through our wheelhouse. Um, and that's, that's mostly all right now. It's, um, I know it's been fun. Aviation is really cool. It's just kind of a unique life. I feel like it's kind of a unique industry. I mean, you can, a lot of times, you know, if you go to a bar or something and you ask somebody what they do, it's, you know, it's very rare. I feel like that you find somebody in aviation. Um, but, you know, so since my time in California, I've also gotten involved with groups um, within the industry, but outside of my um, airport. And so the first, the primary one actually was is the Transportation Research Board. And so that's, if you're not familiar, I mean, it's a national, or maybe, uh, well, it's based in Washington, D.C., but they have an international um, presence. And so, you know, they they deal with everything AV or everything transportation, you know, maritime and pipelines and roadways. Um, but I'm part of the aviation group. And so within the aviation group, we have you know, multiple committees, but then we are, uh, or the group that I'm in and where actually Pete and I first met was as uh, the Young Members Council for Aviation um, or the YMCA. And um, I was actually talking to someone the other day and they're like, why do you keep bringing up the Young Men's Christian Association. And I was like, <laughs> so I was like, uh, maybe I should explain what uh, YMCA is in this context. But we just do, we try to do lots of, um, you know, outreach to people who are, you know, 35 years of age or, or younger. I mean, we, we work with people of, of all ages and experience levels, but it's really the intent of the group is to get people, um, involved who are just starting out in their career or, you know, who are fairly early on in their career um, and network and work on session that we present at the annual transportation research board meeting every January. Um, 
And so actually, maybe this is a good time to let you, you all know that uh, YMCA offers now, this is new this year, we do, um, I guess we'll call it a program or just this, you know, kind of offering where we have opened up our uh, group to university students or people, you know, who need to practice, um, say you've got like a thesis coming up or some type of presentation that you want to get ready for. Um, we've found that a lot of times, you know, if, if people want to practice in front of like their friends or, you know, someone just kind of in their immediate circle, that, that audience may not have the technical expertise to provide actual feedback or, or you know, technical feedback. Um, and so YMCA has started this effort where you can come to us, you know, as you know, we're, we're folks in the aviation industry. Um, you can present to us and you can practice. Uh, and, you know, and we can give feedback that hopefully, you know, will help direct um, your presentation a little more. So that's something that, you know, we would love to extend that invitation to um, Pathways to Aviation and everyone who's a part of that. And um, yeah, I mean, Pete's got my contact information so he can send that out. Um, or actually, and actually, I don't know, Pete, if you have the YMCA email address, but I can send that to you. Um, so let's see, and then there's the Airport Consultants Council, which I'm not a consultant, but I do work with that group um, and you know, help prepare like webinar content. Um, the Airport's Cooperative Research Program or ACRP, they, they publish reports on various topics in the industry. Um, and I'm on a, a panel that actually two panels um, that works to, you know, actually we haven't met in so long, I forget what we should do. But we um, essentially have a, a topic of, you know, that we need to research. We don't actually do the research, but our the those who are on the panel will, um, you know, review the solicit or solicitation of the bids, we'll do the solicitation. And then the firms who respond to those bids to do this, the research, um, you know, we rank them and we, you know, kind of work with the consultant while they undertake the, the research that we have. What am I trying to say? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have brought up ACRP since I don't do it very often, obviously. But um, yeah, so I mean, but all of that has just been immeasurably helpful in my career in getting to know people and developing relationships at other companies um, things like this, you know, being asked to, to present, you know, and, and help people. I mean, I was in your position at one point, you know, where I just felt like I didn't, and not that you guys, you know, don't have your plans figured out and things, but I didn't at the time. And so resources like this were very helpful. And so whatever you can do to, you know, participate in as many things outside of school, um, or your job as you're able, um, will pay off in, in the long run for sure. So, um, and I'm, yeah, I'm sorry I joined late. I was on a presentation um, or giving one for my job. <laughs> so it's, I had to be there for that today, but um, I caught some conversation about um, developing your why and, and figuring out, you know, what it is that makes you wanna do this work. Um, and I actually thought that I had a decent, why or you know, an elevator pitch but these days I'm kind of rethinking that and so it's that changes over time you know your, your why evolves based on the experiences that you have and the projects that you get to work on and um, I will say you know I was I had a flight um, just recently where we were going through some turbulence and the person next to me actually she was, she was across the aisle from me we didn't know each other um, was obviously very upset by the trip you know, like she was traveling by herself um and she was you know like physically reacting to it and she just i could tell you know she was not enjoying the flight and so i just kind of reached over to her and i said you know i work in the aviation industry i'm not a pilot but you know i have friends who are pilots i don't like turbulence either but i've done research on it and from you know conversations that i've had with people in the industry this is why it's not a big deal you know and i tried to just even if it was just a distraction for a minute and maybe it didn't actually convince her, you know, that she was safe. I don't know. Um, you know, she claimed that it helped and, and she said she texted her husband uh, who usually flies with her 
and you know kind of keeps her calm and, and said that you know I had talked to her about it but um, I just did what I could to kind of you know calm her down a little bit and so I was but I was getting off of the plane after we landed walking up the jet bridge and I was just thinking maybe that's like my why you know like I just keep looking for projects in the industry these days that help people um, you're gonna have if you work at an airport you're gonna have to do projects and, and things relative to asphalt you know and, and like maybe some boring things that you know environmental studies and, and that stuff will never go away and that makes sense but you know I just think that there's a lot that can be done in aviation to contribute to you know the well-being of people um, and passengers and that's kind of the whole reason that aviation exists right is to move people so um, yeah I just think it's just important to pay attention to experiences like that and, and kind of maybe that reminds you why you got into this industry and um, I don't know it's 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 unique for everybody but it's important to have that because there will be days that are not fun today was a kind of a long day but um, but it's but I love what I do you know it's 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 fun to be in aviation so um, yeah I don't I mean do you guys have questions for me or what can I answer for you yeah go ahead Hello, Ryan. Nice to meet you. I have a couple of questions for you. Like uh, you said, you are an airport planner. Like what are the tools you use for airport planning? Like are there any softwares or anything like that? Yeah, so I always thought that planning was pretty math heavy. And at least what I do is not that math heavy. And so um, the way that, I mean, every airport is organized similarly, but they're all unique in the way that their organizational chart um, is structured. And so I'll speak from my experience. We've got um, the section at the airport that I am in is called planning and environment. And we do a lot of um, like the initial work where we know we need to, um, this is our, we have a public document actually that you can look at that I helped work on, it's on our website. Um, and so I can speak to it, but we need a new rental car facility and, and you know, but actually now like with COVID and things, we're trying to figure out exactly when. And so all that's delayed. So nothing, nothing is imminent. And, you know, don't take this as <laughs> a concrete answer, but um, I'm just going to use this as an example. So the, for the Conrack facility or the consolidated rental car facility, uh, we've got to figure out where on the airport it goes, right? And then, you know, how big is the footprint? What does it do to the environment? How do we fund it? Um, how does it interact with projects around it? Um, we, we, we develop forecasts for um, passenger traffic, you know, how many people we expect to have at the airport over the next X number of years. And so a lot of that work is done. Um, we'll have to, you know, create these graphic depictions, um, say in AutoCAD, you know, we do a lot of GIS work. Um, what else? We actually, my section at the airport also does um, noise complaints. So we respond to noise complaints. And so there's what you <laughs> can never get away from no matter which airport you go to. But uh, it's, you know, we have a software that tracks flights um, that you know, we have a person who reads the emails or the, you know, the, the calls that are submitted to our office. Um, and then she can pull up you know, the, the person's address and kind of, and look at you know, was there a low flying aircraft and what was the reason? And they can, uh, she can look to see that if they deviated from air traffic control tower, um, uh, you know, just the, the stipulations that they're supposed to be operating under. Um, and so that's its own software. So that's another example, but we do a lot of writing too. And so that's just, that's just the Microsoft suite. <laughs> that's nothing and that's nothing special. Um, you know, you do a lot of communication via you know, written reports or memos or um, graphic presentations, you know, to um, like senior management or to um, members of the community. So it just depends on what, you know, what the project is, but it's, it's probably going to be one of those um, uh, software. Like, apart from this, do you do any simulations after planning before you go for construction? Can you repeat that? Sorry. Apart from these, uh like uh, graphical depictions, do you do any simulations of the planning which you made before you go for actual construction? I do. So you have simulations is what you asked? Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I don't, I don't. Uh, we do have someone in our office who is 
really savvy with AutoCAD. And there are, I understand there are plugins, I guess, or some type of like extension of the program <laughs> that I don't know how to use, um, but he can model, yes, you know, what is it gonna do if we add a gate here? What type of aircraft can fit there? You know, and if we, what's it gonna happen? What's gonna happen if you push it back from the gate? Um, uh, so yeah, yeah, you can you can create different scenarios um, in a modeling context there. But um, trying to think, I mean, we we develop alternatives. So I, I brought up the rental car facility before, and you know, we we maybe will have different iterations of the rental car facility. And so, you know, we model, and we have the consultants who, adult, who do a lot of this for us, um, but we'll model, you know, what could potentially happen if you, you know, if you close this roadway, or if you, you know, if you add a lane here, or if you open this parking lot or, you know, whatever. So we just, we'll talk through a lot of that, but um, in terms of actual you know, modeling where we, we don't, it was fun in college. We got down like on our hands and knees and like drew, you know, like big maps and things. <laughs> they don't do that anymore, <laughs> or at least at, at the airport here. So um, that's probably the extent of what I'll call modeling for the for projects. Yeah. And also at every airport, bot strikes with aircraft is one of the major issues. Like I think I, I keep having a message on my screen that says I have an unstable internet connection. So I'm sorry, but yeah, I'm repeating that. Like bird strikes with aircraft, like whenever the aircraft is around the airport property, the bird life around the airport hits with the aircraft, causing trouble to aircraft. So right. is there something that you come across the airport around, like the aircraft and bird strikes around? So I think it was your question about wildlife. Yeah, wildlife kind of. So yeah, we have a team of people who who focus on that specifically as well. I mean, we've got wildlife hazard management plans, and so they're out there, yeah. you know, monitoring the the airport and things. But um, that also relates back to you know working with what we call our parks department. You know, what type of trees are they planting? Um, where do we have water that's standing on the airport that could be attracting, but uh, you know, certain attract? Yeah, so. Um, yeah, that's a component of it too. I'll let, I don't want to take much of your time. I'll let other people to ask the right. questions. Anybody else? Shonda, you're awesome, buddy. Keep asking questions. Um, what you just demonstrated, Ryan, is that you, you don't have to go to school to have a job. You don't have to go to aviation program in college sure. to get right. an aviation job. And what you just demonstrated is that there are so many specialties that make up the airport planning department, at least yours. Mm -hmm. And yet their degrees may not say anything about aviation. Yeah. So that on one hand is awesome. Can you kind of share with us because you're part of all these young professional type groups and all these groups, what jobs you're starting to see come available either at your airport or at other locations where um, our candidates can think, oh, wow, these types of jobs are open either right this moment or will be in the future based on what's happening in the industry. Yeah, wow. Um, well, I mean, I guess I just would broadly say with the recovery that's happening in the aviation industry, you know, people are traveling again and we, at our airport, we, it's, it's astounding how quickly we're coming back to our numbers, our passenger numbers pre COVID, um, which is creating a lot of anxiety because we were already almost out of space before. And now we're, you know, trying to figure out when we have to start construction so that we, you know, we don't have those constraints um, in the next couple of years. But, um, but I guess the theme overall is just that people are coming back right in, in airports. Um, I think airports probably are, are looking for folks, but also the private sector, you know, consulting, companies. Um, I know a lot of people who got laid off actually before or at the beginning of, of COVID. And so, um, you know, there are consulting firms who are needing help now and they're looking for, and, and you don't have to be like, have a ton of experience to get into consulting. There are entry-level positions where and there are firms that will hire people who just graduated from school. Um, and you do a lot of on-the-job training. And so, I don't, it's, I don't know of specific roles, but um, you know, orga trade organizations like uh, AAAE, so that's the American Association of Airport Executives. Um, 
and Airport Consultants Council, so ACC. So those two groups are good um, to start with, but they will have like job boards on their website. They only can kind of keep an eye on, um, you know, it, you know, they'll update that pretty regularly. So uh, yeah, I, I, it's hard to give specifics on that, but I think this is a good time to be looking for a job. I'll say that. All right, uh, I like that. Any other questions from anybody else? None. Oh, I'd like to say, yeah, Andrew. It seems like Andrew have one more question. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, I guess my question is, what advice do you have for us that are still in college? Like, how would you, I guess, suggest that we kind of go about searching for like new interests, like you said that you found it because of like an internship and the, or a project that led you to the airport, but like kind of just like how do you suggest we kind of put ourselves out there in different places. Mm, I think it's, I got lucky because I was already kind of in a field that I liked. And so that just, it was sort of a natural extension of that field to lead me to things that I liked more. <laughs> so um, I don't know, I think, I think you have to figure out first what it is, right? And then, and then you know, I luckily was at a university that did a lot of research and, and was well renowned for a lot of different things. And Ohio State's really well known. And so there were a lot of opportunities there. But um, gosh, I, I guess I don't know how, what people's attitudes are about cold calling, but I don't really have a problem with it. I think that, you know, it's, it's if you if there's a firm that you're interested in or if there's um you know, an airport that, I mean, look at airport websites and see if there's um, internship positions open or, or even positions that you're not qualified for right now, um, but you could be later, but call up the hiring manager or, um, you know, ask a firm if you can spend an afternoon with them and, and see kind of what, but just the point here, I guess, is to establish communication and, and to start to build that relationship so they get to know you. Um, but Gosh, there's so actually the Young Members Council for Aviation, that group I mentioned, um, we welcome, you know, people who aren't finished with school yet. So that's that's a good place too to network. I don't know if you guys use Slack uh, or not, but that's we have a Slack channel, and so there's you can converse with um, with existing members, and, and you know there's we have we're made up of airport professionals and consultants and academicians and. Um, Gosh, I, I think there are some pilots in the group. So you know, there's just a wide range of, of uh, personalities and, and, it's, and backgrounds. So I think it's just kind of seeking out either a, an institution or a person who's done something that you think is really cool and just reaching out to them and asking them maybe if they've got some you know, advice or, or time to you know, sit down with you. But it's hard, I know it, it can be different. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anything else? Um, I have one thing to ask you. Have you ever heard about TAM, Total Airspace and Airport Modelers? Gosh, no. <laughs> it's like airport modeling, complete, like uh, okay. just building from uh, building the airport from scratch. Mm, that's cool. It's the software of Boeing, Boeing subsidy, Japanson. All right. So that is a software which I used uh, in the last semester to construct a new terminal at uh, KATL. Atlanta Airport, which is totally a simulation software. Yeah. Like all the big airports recently started using these softwares just before constructing. Yes, they do the simulation here in the software and they see if everything is working good. If the if all things are working good, then they'll go and apply it in the. Is that is it like an airfield tool, like a, like aircraft in the movement area, or is it like passenger flow within side of it's, the terminal? Oh, it's not like commercial side. It's more towards the aircraft operation side gates. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's All very right. cool. I will have to look that up. Thanks. All right. All right. Well, Ryan, um, that that thank you. Um, we bring on guests every week, and every single one of them blows us away because you, you clearly have passion. Um, you have a unique path to getting to where you are now. And I don't know how old you are, but you're, you're not over 30. So um, you're speaking to peers, 
which is kind of cool. And that's what they're looking for, right? And they're looking for somebody who has kind of been through their steps and succeeded and who can open doors for them. And I, I can already identify two people on this call who are probably going to reach out to you in the next week Great. just to talk shop. But um, I totally appreciate, uh, first of all, what you do. Um, I, I get excited when leaders like you are involved in industry associations because they're not just going to work. They're showing their passion by getting involved and kind of spreading their influence and then just creating opportunities for others and getting engaged like the AAAE. I'll be at the Southwest chapter conference next month. Right. And so I'll see some of your counterparts, your colleagues. Yeah. That's exciting and getting involved in that organization. Um, so keep that up. Um, but um, I encourage you to let others know, even in the uh, YMCA, um, you know, more about what we do. I know I already met with them once, but would love to have them speak just as you did to, to our candidates on these weekly workshops. And yeah, um, sure. just totally appreciative of, of you coming on today for, for half or 40 minutes, just to share your awesomeness with others. And hopefully I'm sure you've inspired, inspired besides me, inspired others to kind of pursue what what you're doing and you know look up your projects and check out the Sacramento area airports and all of that just to keep tabs with you so thank you so much thank you and uh, I guess I will say um, speaking of the airport if you go it's smf dot arrow so a e r o that's our website and if you uh, you have to do some digging it's kind of hard to find but um, our master plan that we just updated so that's what I was referencing earlier um, that's a good, a great place to, to see kind of what goes into, um, airport planning. You know, that's, that's a, a big piece of it. Um, cause that's every function at the airport, you know, land side and air side and pass into everything. So getting, you know, look through that and, um, yeah, if you have questions or, um, just anything, feel free to reach out and for sure. We'll, um, we'll talk after this call Pete about getting, uh, some time for YMCA to come and, uh, and give a pitch. Cool. That'd be awesome.